Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. Welcome to my blog that you've been begging for for months. <laughs> this is just a good old fashioned spend the day with me blog. So come along, spend the day with me. Zoe is behind the camera. She's here. Today is Wednesday, February 14th. It's Valentine's Day. It's also Ash Wednesday. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, it is? Yeah. I didn't know that. Do you partake in those things? I guess I do. Are you gonna go get ashed? If I can make it in time, the church I go to is a little far away, but. Well, happy Valentine's Day. I, yep, he just texted me. My dad brings me chocolate covered strawberries every Valentine's Day and he just said he's on his way over so I know he's bringing strawberries, which is sweet. So we'll wait for him, but we have a few errands to run today. Number one, I need a few groceries. Number two, we're planning on doing a guest room makeover. Starting to get plans together for that, starting to get our shopping list together for that. Number three, Zaya's birthday is April 7th. The party is allegedly gonna be on the 13th, according to Zoe. According to me, yeah. So we've been planning, we probably, when do we officially set the theme? That was- January. Maybe even December. Yeah. I feel like it was pretty early on that we started talking about it because we wanted to be ahead of the game this year for sure. So we know what the theme is. The theme is Magical Fairy Garden. And we have a deck and everything that we can show you for an idea of the theme, but we haven't really done anything for the party yet. Like we haven't purchased anything. We haven't booked anything. Nothing is set in stone, but we have a lot of ideas. We have our deck, we have our inspo. We know what we want to basically do. So we just need to start getting the ball rolling there, basically. Welcome to the world of Raven. This is my life, my Pinterest board. This is my personal Pinterest account that's not public facing. These are all my secret plans. So we just had Galentine's. Obviously we did the playroom. Now we've got Fairy garden party coming up. Ooh, it's nicely organized into different sections. Mm -hmm. So we did that so you can see the general vibes, refreshments. Oh, I was like, why did you save this <laughs> tomato pasta? Let's do this one. This one really shows the vibes. Mushrooms, fairy lights, lots of florals, lots of greenery, wooden tones and actual wooden objects, like very like natural, real. Like I want it to be realistic, not like cartoon bubblegum pink fairy, but like real mushroom fairy, if that makes sense. So those are the vibes for that. Then we've got garage makeover, which we just finished up and we got guest room. I started this guest room board, I think in 2019 <laughs> and never, did it, never came back to it, but I still like the general theme that I started with. It's like boho, beachy, natural tones, you know, the pompous grass and the wood and the tile, the pompous stone. Pompous grass is such a weird word. Pompous grass. That grass is so pompous. Pam or It's like pam pampus, pam. Pampus grass. So you see the vibes. My vision for it was making my guests feel like they're on vacation, you know, you're, you're at like a resort but not your standard crisp, clean cut, <laughs> crisp, clean cut, boring, plain hotel. I wanted it to be like beachy resort, Tulum, Mexico, tropical location, destination, hotel, resort vibes. So that's where I'm pulling all my inspo from. We have a few DIY ideas. Mainly the one that we're thinking about today is doing something like this, where we are going to buy or build a piece of furniture and then tile it with this broken tile terrazzo mosaic style tile DIY. But in order to do that, we need to know what piece of furniture we're doing that to, and we need to be able to find the right kind of tile. So we kind of want to get a head start with that today. Maybe going thrifting, it would be perfect. I would love to thrift the perfect piece of furniture that we could just tile over. But of course you never know what you're gonna find in the thrift store. So we're just gonna look and see. We need to go to HEB, we need to go thrifting, we need to get some tile. My thought with the tile is it's gonna be a terrazzo piece so we can get multiple different kinds of tile. That's right? true, like a mix, a mixture of and tones so and textures. If we pick up some tile and it's not enough, we can go get more tile. That's true. And if we have leftovers, we can donate, to, donate it to somewhere like the Austin Creative Reuse, which if we have time, I think we should check out just because it's a cool place. Yeah, a lot of my inspo picks have a mixture for sure of different tones and stuff. And I like that look, so. I found a bunch of different sellers on Facebook Marketplace with tile. I like these travertine 24 by 24 that you sent me. Well, this is too chunky. What is? This. You Because it, it's, it's a terrazzo tile. 
So to then break it up, it's like terrazzo within terrazzo, which I don't think is bad. No, it's I mean just, the thickness. I don't think so. That looks really thick. Like it's a tile. But for what we're doing, we need it to not be so thick. Why? Because it. I mean, think about trying to grout that. You just need more grout. For sure, you can't mix thicknesses of tile. That's for sure. You can't have thin Fair tile enough. and thick Fair tile because then it's going to be like this. But I think for this project, you definitely don't want to work with a thicker tile that, not that it wouldn't be possible, I guess, technically. I don't think it's ideal for this type of project. I can you know, the like difference between working. tiling versus like stone work, like stones is like these big chunks of things that you have to like fill in between. Yeah. That's almost like mini stone work at that like point. Like at that point you're doing masonry. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. And for the fact that we don't know what we're doing, I think let's not make it too hard but i think these tiles are that first picture good travertine tiles 24 by 24. yeah i personally liked the free 18 by 18. it's got some bluish gray in there which i don't think really goes with your color scheme but yeah that's the i, I like the idea pretty. of it but I, the color scheme felt wrong okay i also liked that 50 dollars tile listing she said all of that tile for 50 dollars Oh, um, I don't want all of it, but can I pick through it? I think so, yeah. yeah I, I think that would be fun. Like, go pick through it, see what's there, what cool tiles can we find. I wonder what you could be bringing. <laughs> That's so it's sweet. always appreciated. Yeah. Always good, thank you. I've been doing this ever since they were little, little girls. That's very sweet. <laughs> one of them is in Pflugerville, and the other one is in North Austin. Um, they haven't given me their exact addresses yet. I think we should start heading east, hit that Goodwill I like. I have a whole plan. Head east, hit the Goodwill I like. Another Goodwill, another club, another club. And then hit Pflugerville, pick up some of those tiles, get the tiles from North Austin, and then we can look at some of the other places we need to go to. Do you want some Valentine's pins? Yes. <laughs> Since I had school with her little Valentine's goodies that we made, Ooh. these are left over. This is not my jacket. Whose is it? Mm. You have a Valentine? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to put this stuff in the craft room. Also the craft room. How is it? It's not horrible, but it needs this quick zhuzh so that we stay on track, <laughs> I think. Yeah. That's fair. Gotta, gotta keep putting stuff where it really goes. That's the key. This stuff needs to be put away. That's why my apartment's always messy. It's like, I won't put stuff away. I will legitimately- It has it a home. So we just need to put it in, in its rightful home. Cheers. I'm forcing They you. do the chocolate real thick on these. Yeah. Like, hear that? Listen to this crunch. <laughs> Ow. I do need to go to H-E-B and get a few things. I don't have to get my normal whole grocery haul because of our personal chef. Fun fact, I got a personal chef. It's like meal prep. You wanna see? If you know me, you know I don't really love to cook. I mean, I do for like certain fun things, but on a daily basis, I'm not much of a chef, not much of a foodie. And so, if I'm being honest, I was doing a whole lot of door dashing and a whole lot of eating out. Plus for like Zoe and I every day during work days, we were door dashing lunch every day. So I was like, you know what? With the amount of money that I'm spending on DoorDash, which is a lot, I could probably hire a personal chef meal service delivery thing where we could get like real healthy homemade food probably for the same cost. We looked it up, lo and behold, it basically comes out to be the same cost. So we started using this company called The Austin Artisan, Food Redefined. This is not sponsored or anything. The OGs know that my mom used to work as a personal chef. She did this service, she had her own business and she's actually friends with the guy who owns this company and um, recommended him. So this is just something that I wanted to try this week we got salmon, chicken thighs, mashed potatoes, some different rice dishes, roasted broccoli, salads. This is our second week getting it. Last week was pretty good. It's one of those things where like the chef has to learn your tastes and learn your preferences. So we're still kind of like getting used to it. But so far I feel like it's definitely healthier. It's, you know, it's better food, like better quality food. And it's very convenient to just have like, I'm doing lunches and dinners. So lunch for Zoe and I, dinner for myself slash sharing with Zaya the things that she will eat because Zaya is very picky. So Zaya still kind of has her own stuff to the side, which is why I need to go grocery shopping because I mainly need to restock on the stuff. For Zaya, we're looking very empty in all of her little snack bins and stuff. So I do need to get that stuff still, but I don't have to buy like all the full normal groceries because we've got pre-made meals. It's so nice having this stocked up and I actually have 
The rest of it's in the um, outdoor fridge too. Hello. Every time I start filming, you just come and get right up he where I'm filming. Camera. Be nice. I just love you. I just wanna love you. Also in other news, um, I'm getting a pathway built from my backyard to my front yard, essentially. I, around the side of my house is where I like park my trash cans and then like, to put the trash out, you kind of have to like go around, go through the gate and go to the, you know, the driveway and put them out in front of the house. But that pathway right there is just grass. Really, it's not even grass, it's mud at this point. It's always been muddy and it's just not a very good pathway and it's hard to roll the trash cans. So I wanted to put actual pavers to make it like an actual pathway and also make it look nicer. So they are currently, they started on it yesterday. They're currently out there finishing it, but there's some confusion about exactly how I want the pavers placed, I guess. The guy just texted me. He said he will let the workers know to place the pavers without the gravel and get my approval first. He will call and text once they are ready. Well, when's that gonna be? When they're ready. When we gonna be gone. Okay, and they'll send you pictures. Yeah, I guess they can just send pictures and I can do it like that. Cause I just don't, he was explaining something where he was like, and then we might just curve it and twist it and do it like this. And I'm like, no, don't, I don't know. I'm worried about how they're gonna do it. You know, one area that stays nice is the tech closet, I think, for the most part. We haven't had to redo this, at least. Whenever like I'm on camera duty, I really try to make sure like everything goes <laughs> Some back. Some people in this house <laughs> do a good job of putting things back. It makes it so much easier when we have so many different, like this it is It doesn't not, look organized, but it is. It's just because there's so many wires. They're just a little tangled, but. I don't see the fanny pack in here. I wasn't the one who put it away. I wasn't either. Speaking of <laughs> putting things in the right spot. So I'm not sure who, if it is in the house, or if possibly it went home with someone. That's what I think might have happened. Dang it. We had a, a cute little fanny pack to carry all the camera stuff when we go vlogging out and about. Are you sure it's not in I those drawers? No, I didn't look at all the drawers. <gasps> That's Here we go. It. Oh, there it is. Tee -hee. Yeah. So you can pack an extra battery. Microphones and my Aquaphor, and I can put my phone in there and my wallet. Look at producer Zoe, you look very producer today. Yeah, the it's the hat and the quarter zip. And the fanny pack's just gonna really set it off. And I, I, I'm gonna like do like the trendy kids do. Oh, you're gonna do a side saddle? Yeah, how do they just like throw it over their shoulder? Very professional. It's upside down. <laughs> there you go. Cute, ready to vlog. First stop is actually Hobby Lobby because I have a return. And I do want to be clear that I don't support Hobby Lobby even though I do support them a lot financially because I shop here a lot, but it's only because they genuinely carry different products that I need for my project. I am very much team Michaels, okay? And I would get everything from Michaels if I could, but sometimes Hobby Lobby just has the things I need. Just made the return. If you want to know why I don't support Hobby Lobby, Google <laughs> Hobby Lobby smuggled this is not really the main reason why I don't support them, but fun fact, if you Google Hobby Lobby smuggled artifacts, you'll find some interesting information. Let's put it that way. Next stop, Goodwill. Something sorta, kinda, nah, this wasn't really what I was envisioning, but if we're trying to do something that's like gonna go under the TV in the guest room, this could kinda work. And it needs to be like a simple flat shape to be able to do the tile effect on top of it. <laughs> this is giving Ikea level quality. It's only $15. I could see this done and styled cutely. I think it is too wobbly and if we tile it and it wobbles, it's gonna crack. It feels like it needs a, a back on it or yeah, something. If this is part of it. I didn't even realize that at first. And it's not even a cowboy boot. Yeah, it It's just like some boot. random little girl Walmart boot. How much is it? $11. That's a steal. <laughs> This is a bit scary. Lil Bo Keep. You're supposed to put your bows clipped to her hair. Wait, that's kind of cute. No, it's not. <laughs> that was a bus. Didn't find anything in there. There's like no good thrift stores anymore these days. Y'all notice that? Maybe it's just around here, but I think we could try to go to Savers or the other Goodwill location. I'm not super hopeful, cause I know from past experience, their selection is pretty limited, but it'd be worth a shot.
we could definitely like like paint that. Eight dollars. It's heavy. That's good though. Hmm. A little magical fairy garden bench for the fairy party, $6. It's very unique though. I feel like you won't find this anywhere else. No. Perhaps, so maybe it's worth the $6 for that reason. For some tabletop decor. I don't know about that $8 mushroom. I feel like we could get the same thing brand new, cheaper. What about uh, reduced, reuse, recycle, Miss Raven? Is it reduced? It's reused. <laughs> The lady just told us that everything's cleared out today because Tuesday is their big sale day. Today is Wednesday. So everybody just came yesterday and bought everything up. So that's why the shelves are looking empty today. So apparently we came on the wrong day. A green teapot with like a vine motif feels kind of fairy party-ish. So we've got a teapot, a mushroom, and a little bench so far. Oh, I thought that was the Duggars. <laughs> Might as well be, who are these people? Went to SMU, they did band. This tells their whole story. Something tells me they're not together anymore. Maybe they're brother and sister. Michael and... Band and... Jets. What's her name? It says such a cute couple. X-Files, Frasier, 24. Michael and who? Boyfriend, lovers. I feel like... She I, made it She made for it Michael. for him and then they broke up. And, and he, he donated, donated it. <laughs> All right, Miss Raven, what are you doing? Just strapping in my mushroom so he can have a safe ride home. No big deal. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> The people on Facebook Marketplace are not answering us to come pick up the tile. So now we are at Floor and Decor. I thought you were gonna swing over. <laughs> oh, no, I, there's nothing to swing over to. Oh, I thought the sign was right there. <laughs> Anyways, we're at Floor and Decor. Another project that I wanna do is the powder bathroom and I really wanna make it dark and moody and textural. Didn't think about putting tiles on the whole wall, but that's an idea. I don't think that's a little bit advanced for our DIY skills, but we can maybe learn. We'll get there. How to tile walls. Something like this would be cool. So there's multiple ways to go about this. You could get big tiles and chop them up to get the mosaic effects like this that we would be trying to do. Or you could buy the cheat sheet tiles, which are already like that on the sheet. So we're just looking, looking at the options. So they do have a little selection here of that style of tile. They don't have much and they're definitely a lot more expensive to do it like this. This is like $13 a piece versus like one slab of tile this size could be like $1, $2, $3. So it would be definitely more cost effective to just buy the tile and break it up yourself. And none of these are screaming at me as far as being like the colors and style that I would want. We're looking at some clearance tile options. There's this, which is pretty, and it's got a nice slick sealed top. This is on clearance for $1.78 per one of these. It just looks like you're gonna drop it when you hold it like that. <laughs> I'm not gonna drop it. The problem is we don't know what we're tiling. We know we wanna do some sort of thing to go under the TV, but we don't have the thing. So we don't know the dimensions to even try to calculate how much tile we need. I feel like we're kind of doing this backwards. So we would have to guess mm -hmm. about how much tile we think we need. And then if we don't have enough, come back and get more. Yeah. Slash, we haven't had luck with finding a piece of furniture. So are we gonna have to build a piece of furniture? Probably to even do it on. And I would really like just a simple side top side. Yeah. Little you know, console. What if we looked on Facebook Marketplace for a console? That's and, also and what true. if they like answered me? They're not answering. That's the first problem. They don't be answering. I'm just taking pictures of the stuff that I liked for reference. I feel like we're just not ready to make this purchase quite yet because we need to figure out what the actual piece of furniture is going to be, if we're going to make something or what. And then we can come back and buy stuff. At least I know there's options here. So that's good. Next stop, H-E-B, so I can get some stuff because we have like nothing to put in Zaya's lunch for tomorrow at this point. So I really need to get stuff for her and then we could go home and figure ourselves out. Last stop, H-E-B. These are great to make little mini pizzas, like a DIY pizza Lunchable. I don't understand the difference between all these different mozzarellas. Fat-free mozzarella, 2% low moisture mozzarella, low moisture part skim mozzarella, low moisture whole milk mozzarella. What does that mean? For the viewers at home, do you like cap and crunch? Do you like oops all berries? Or do you like crunch berries? 
We like this one. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Cause we're boring. A rice square strawberry yogurt flavored coated marshmallow cereal loops freeze dried strawberries, but it's really just Cheerios and strawberries in a bag. When I see stuff like this, I'm like, oh, I can make that. I just need to buy Cheerios and stuff, but then I'm not gonna make it, so. What about the little yogurt bit? That's true. I deserve, right? I also have s'mores version, which looks good too. Graham crackers, pretzels. Why not both? <laughs> Mr. Raven, will you buy me this? A fling launcher? Yes, it's dino age. Do you have fling launcher money? <laughs> Just a few things. I don't need to get much since we have the meal prep. Just a couple of little small things for Zaya. $200 later. Progress update. We just got home from the grocery store. Progress update on this project. They've got the main pavers put down. So this is the general idea. I'm just making sure that I like this orientation and spacing. I think this part's fine. So the trash cans go right here. You pull the trash can like this. Is going over the gravel in the spacers gonna be an issue? They said that it will be fine and it will roll because they're gonna tightly put the gravel in to where it's gonna just roll across easily. That's what they told me. That's I am said. a little concerned. Our little finds of the day. Oh, I gotta get the mushroom out of the car seat too. <laughs> I got a Valentine delivery while we were gone and my dad was here talking to the construction guy. So he accepted the delivery and he called me. He's like, you got a delivery. It was some flowers. I put it in a vase for you. <laughs> Look where he put it in. My carafe like drink pitcher thing that I use for entertaining. I mean, to be fair, it does, it does look like a vase. I mean, I guess it does work as a vase. I just think it's funny. Men, dads, not knowing what to do. <laughs> I'm gonna switch it over to a real vase, but these are nice. Secret admirer. No, I know who sent it, but I'm not telling you guys. And some chocolate. But these need to go in a actual vase and be cut down. Lunch break. We're having green goddess mashed potatoes from our meal prep. Mmm. And crispy chicken thighs. With crispy chicken thighs braised with cabbage, bacon, mustard, and thyme. Wow. Except we're having trouble with the heating instructions, so we're eating it in sections because the chicken's not done yet. Potatoes are good. Potatoes are good. They cook it to where it's like, most of the stuff is like halfway cooked so that you finish cooking it yourself so it's more fresh and not just like fully reheated, which I think is good because I'm not a huge fan of like leftover vibes, mm -hmm. you know? So this way it's kind of like, in a sense, fresh cooked meals because you finished it off yourself. But we just have been having trouble with the um, reheat instructions. I'm, I'm not very knowledgeable about like how long things take to cook, especially meats. Now that's sizzling. And I don't know if this thermometer is working properly or what, because is it supposed to... Like when you look at this, do you think the dot is telling you or the other side is telling you? Uh, can it be both? Medium rare all the way to well. So as the temperature goes up, it's telling you um, how cooked it is. This needs to be at 160 for chicken, but when I put it in... Thermometer, I think if you're putting it in the oven though, I wonder if that might change. The yeah, I don't really know how to use this. Only way I know is by cutting into it, honestly. Yeah. It's still raw in the middle. I'm finna uh, air fryer it. Air fryer just goes so much quicker. Um, when I'm cooking chicken, I'll like cut it into smaller pieces that because too. it has yeah more surface area. Just don't have the patience for this. Slow cooked braised chicken. Come on, chicken. <laughs> Hungry. We need to decide what we're gonna do for this table, tile table debacle. Oh yeah. I'm a little nervous about building a structurally st structurally sound. We can do it. Piece of furniture. Search Pinterest for DIY console table. Like this. We can do that, you think? I think so. Like that. 
I like the curved look, but I don't understand how you achieve that. Well, they're using big fat wood. This one was a box built out with, because what I didn't want to do was this. This is what I'm not going for if we're going to build something. This little thin little three pieces of wood taped together. <laughs> Cause I don't think that's gonna be sturdy enough, especially for like tiling over it. So I like the one where it's like actually built out into a thicker shape. Do you want all of the surfaces tiled or just the front and the outsides? Like, do you want this part and the underneath and the insides or just the top of it? I would say the whole thing. Cause you're gonna like, if we're doing that shape where it's do, 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 I, feel, I would say if anything, not the underneath, but you are gonna see the underneath. So what would it be? Just like painted white? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Tile would probably look the best. But if we were trying to avoid, if we were trying to cut back on some of the tiling and leave the underneath. It's like, if you're gonna tile the rest of it. That's, what, that's double the tiling though, almost. If we could find maybe like a tile or a stone that complemented the wood and we found like, like a complementary wood stain or paint color, I think then that could work. Yeah, I could see it being like painted a complementary color on the underneath. Mm -hmm. I mean, but normal, yeah, if it's that type of shape, normally you see it tiled all the way around. So we gotta learn to build a table and learn to tile. At my mom's house, brought Zoe over here to show her my mom's backyard because I'm thinking for Zaya's fairy garden birthday party. My mom's backyard is actually, I always say my mom, my parents. My dad lives here too. My parents' backyard is actually more fairy garden-ish than mine. Also, we wouldn't be using the pool at all for this party. It's not gonna be a pool party. And my pool takes up so much of my yard and it's just like right there. And so have to avoid it and work around it would be kind of annoying, I think. And I don't have that much grass space. I don't really have like actual big trees or anything. So first of all, they have this deck space, wooden deck, which kind of gives fairy clubhouse, treehouse vibes. I don't know. My mom has like a lot of plants and things. We could probably bring plants, add plants. Of course, we're gonna decorate and do a bunch of stuff, but I just feel like the overall vibes up here. We can move this furniture, put different furniture, set up some stuff up here, make it very fairy tree house, you know, and then there's- and there's trees. Yeah, there's actual big tree trees. I don't have any trees like this on my property at all. I have my little trees that I just planted myself, which is not the same thing. And then you go down and they have this little thing, this little area. We could probably even like, my dad's gonna be mad, but what if we, move the grill out the way and make this a something. Or maybe it's um, live hibachi, <laughs> live hibachi lunch on the grill. I don't know, but there, there's this structure, the nice tree, you know, covering everything. Just a lot more grass space and foliage and trees than my yard has. It's not a huge yard and it kind of like, they don't have a fence blocking anything at all. <laughs> There's no fence. So it's like open to the street, open to this neighbor and open to that neighbor. So I have to be mindful of that. Oh yeah, I forgot they had this little garden right here. Maybe we can incorporate it somehow. Fairy garden. Yeah. And then this is obviously the main open area that we could work with. Another tree, which this- And the neighbor's backyard. Yeah, but the I think the line is like right here. Yeah, you can see it. So we just need to like put stuff right here. <laughs> like the backdrop. <laughs> to kind of block. Do you but think I feel like we'll have work. enough space? Now we can, we don't have space for like bounce house and all these other big things. I think we have space for the main things that I care about. Unicorn? I think we could do a unicorn in this okay. space because I was thinking they could pull up right here on the street side and just <laughs> bring the horse up here, yeah. you know? If they pull up right there and th then they can come through here, we'll just make sure they don't go into the neighbors, but you know, pet the unicorn right here. You don't need a lot of space. I mean, we're not doing rides, right? It's just like pet. So I feel like that could work, but bounce house would be the thing that we don't have space for, I would say. But I don't feel like that's very fairy-ish anyway. The kids love it, but it's not like, pertinent to the theme. So I wouldn't be mad about that. Thoughts and feelings? I am a little worried that we're not gonna have enough space. Cause you know, we're gonna want our backdrop. We're gonna want like different activities. We're gonna wanna have food and refreshments and a cake. And then we have a horse. So I'm a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the And then unicorn. we have a horse. The unicorn. Uh, so I am worried about space. Personally, I would wanna ask the neighbors if we could use their yard and slip them some money. I don't think we need that. I think... I would like there to be room for the kids to run around because they're gonna be rambunctious 
And if there's too many of them in a cramped space with too many activations going on, it's just everyone's gonna feel cramped and it, it, it's not gonna be enjoyable. I would say food and drink and refreshments would be more up there. That's where you can like sit, chill, get food, whatever. As far as activations, we know I just said, you know, unicorn can be in this general area. We know we want to have like a grab your dress up stuff. Grab your dress up. We want make room a, for the performers. Make a fairy garden. Well, there, type it's of not. Thing. You don't need room for the performers because the performers are supposed to just walk around the party. They are, but it's like the performer is going to be interacting with children, and I, th I thought of it more as like a when a magician is going up to you doing close magic, like he's just walking up to people doing things one on one. So it's not like he's sitting at a table doing a performance. We wanted cotton candy, mm -hmm. cart. That would be perfect right here. Yeah, an activity of some crafting activity. It's just like thinking about fitting that all back here with the amount of people we invited last year. It will not be the amount of people we invited. That's a very key point. I'm thinking definitely smaller guest list. I just wanted to get a general, show you the general scope of what's available here. So you have a, an, a visual and an idea of what we would be working with. And then from there, we'd have to actually, in a more detailed way, map out. Yeah. Okay, this is what we're for sure having for how many people. So this could go here, this could go there. I am just a little bit worried that it might get overcrowded, but I think this is like the best option. Having yeah, it. it's our best option that we have so far anyway, so. Unless someone else has a, a garden we can borrow. Let us know. How was school? Good. You had a fun Valentine's Day party? Uh-huh. I want to ask you a question. Do you know why we're here? <laughs> no, me and Zoe came over here to look at the backyard because we were thinking for your birthday party, which do you remember what, what the theme is? Yeah, fairy themed. Fairy garden theme? Yeah. yeah. So we feel like this backyard is better than our backyard. Because our backyard has a pool and we don't really need a pool for a exactly. garden. Exactly. And Grammy has lots of plants and trees here. That's my daughter. That's exactly what I said. So I wanted to ask your opinion on that. If you think it would be good to have your party here instead of at our house. Do you think that Grammy and Papa are going to let us do that? You go ask them. You're going to go ask them? Yeah, you go ask Papa. What were you saying about the party? What did your friends say? They said that. So you had the fancy little boxes that we made with the chocolate in it. And then you brought allergy friendly gummy snacks and you brought the cookies that you made with Grammy. Mm -hmm. So did they think that was extra special or what? They thought it was um, special, but Two of my friends came up to my teacher and me and she said she didn't like them and then came and he said, yeah, but he agreed. Wait, one of your classmates went to tell the teacher that she didn't like your Valentine? No, and next, and then she came up to both of us and said she didn't like it. <laughs> well, that's so rude. She was talking about the, the cookie or what? The cookie. What kind of cookie was it, Grammy? Sugar cookie. Just homemade. Plain, just plain homemade sugar cookies? With icing and glitters and sprinkles. With icing and glitters and sprinkles. And she didn't, she said it didn't taste good. Oh. Did it taste good to you? Did you eat one? Yeah. It taste tested one with icing and it taste tested one plain. And it was good? What did your teacher say? She said she really liked them. But what did she say when that little girl said she didn't like the chips? She said, oh. <laughs> okay, we came home real quick because I got word that the guys were done with my pathway and I wanted to come check it out and make sure it was good. It's not exactly perfect how I would have liked, but it's just because they had to work around so many variables and like there was only so much they could do with the space and the lining up of everything. And so like, this is awkward for sure, but I don't know a better way to do that. They didn't know a better way to do it. It just kind of has to be like that. So I don't love that, but again, I don't know any other way around it. So that's kind of how it had to be. But then it goes like this all the way. They had to watch out for this little thing in the ground right here. And then it goes through the gate. Turn this way. And then I have this little parking area for my trash cans. So like overall, it looks how I wanted it overall. I think it's fine. I mean, it's literally, it's not supposed to be 
you know, a focal point of my home. It's literally a trash can path. <laughs> it's definitely better than the big old muddy patch of little bits of grass and mud that was here before. So hopefully it's gonna be more functional. Now I'm a little worried about like the gravel in between since there's such big gaps, like rolling the trash cans over this. I know they make a, uh, something that you can put in your gravel to help like basically like glue it in place i think so i might have to get something like that but let's see i want to kind of test it out i haven't tested it yet so parking wise is definitely an improvement and then it kind of gives me space like if i want to not that i should need to ever put anything right here but that space is there instead of just being a dumping ground like it was. Let's see, testing it out as far as like rolling them out down the path. It was definitely catching on the gravel a little bit, but it wasn't like preventing me from rolling it. It just sort of was a little bit of extra friction right there, but it still rolled. And it didn't look like it kicked up too many rocks. This is how many rocks are out of place. I went back and forth. So it did kick up a few rocks, you know, like just a couple here and there, not that many. And then a couple right here. I think it's fine. I think it's an improvement. I think putting something in the gravel to help keep the gravel down will definitely help. So I'm gonna look into that, but you know, it's better than just having a muddy, muddy pathway. So I'm okay with it. But in other news, y'all see my garage door? Do y'all see this big old dent in my garage door? Do y'all see that? Do y'all see that big old crease right there? Yeah, let me, let me tell you something about that. So the reason why there's a big old dent in my garage door, which mind you, these are brand new garage doors because if y'all remember, I didn't talk about this really on my YouTube channel, but I posted about it on my Instagram story. My old garage doors a couple months ago had a random malfunction as I was backing out of my driveway. Obviously I had the garage door up. I was backing out of my driveway. The thing that holds the garage door up let go and it came crashing down onto the back of my car as I was trying to back out. And it damaged the back of my car trunk area pretty badly and it completely bent up and broke and damaged the garage door. Now, I have two garage doors. So that door needed to be completely replaced, but I was like, instead of just replacing it for the same exact one, which come to find out was like the cheapest, worst kind of garage door you can get and I didn't know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna replace it for something nicer, which means I need to replace both of them so that they're matching. So I had to do a whole full garage door replacement and it was very expensive for the kind of doors that I wanted. And I had to get my car repaired. I had to drive a rental car for a long time because it took a long time to repair my car. It was a whole bunch of hoopla. Never quite figured out why the garage door malfunctioned like that. It was like a random freak accident, I don't know. So that happened, went through a lot of hoopla and time to wait for the garage door parts to come in and installation and wait for my car to get fixed, blah, 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 blah. That happened. I just barely got these brand new garage doors done, everything done and squared away. A couple weeks ago, I ordered DoorDash delivery food. The lady comes to deliver my food. She forgot to put her car in park when she pulled up to my house and her car continued rolling and crashed into my garage door. And I caught it all on camera. And she left me a note on the, the bag of food. I did not speak to her face to face. She left a note. She, she at least did the right thing by leaving her insurance information and leaving a note on the food. So when I came out, because I had no idea that it had even happened. I was like editing a video. I wasn't listening or looking whenever she pulled up. So the only reason why I knew is because I saw the note on the food and I went out and I looked and it used to look worse. The initial damage was bent. I have a picture I can show you. It was bent way further in. My dad came over and bent it back out a little bit, um, but she, fully smashed into it and dented it pretty far in. And these are my brand new expensive garage doors. So that's why my garage doors has that has that dent in it. The DoorDash driver forgot to put her car in park and crashed into my brand new garage doors. I feel like that would only happen to me. So luckily, because she left her insurance information, we went back and forth with insurance. Her insurance did end up covering it. So it's covered and I'm in the process of waiting for them to be able to come out and repair them after I just got them installed. 
after that initial hoopla. So there's just always something going on at the Raven Elise household, whether it's a project that I chose to do for my own personal reasons or whether it's something that was placed upon me, there's always something going on. So yeah, that's my life. This, this, this is for my fairy party. Yes, we went thrifting today and this is what I found. Mm -hmm. A teapot, a mushroom, and a little bench. I got an idea. Maybe we, now that I know how to sew and you also know how to sew, for, you've been knowing how to sew for a long time, maybe we could like sew some clothes for my Barbie and then for my like two of my Barbies and then we can sit them down on this bench. Mm. Turn some of your Barbies into little fairies. Yeah. I need you to put away your snacks, how they go in the pantry, how you like them. your top favorite items. Ooh, rainbow pencil colors with all the colors at the same time. What's in there? Ooh, what does it make? You have to put it together and see what it makes. It's a little person. Is it Minecraft? It looks like Minecraft. Nobody gave you any candy? There's no candy in here. I did get candy, but I ate it all already. You ate it all at school? Yes. How much candy was it? It was two Hershey Kisses, one Smartie, and gum. Mm. Look at this, that's cute. Yeah, it's a puzzle. It's a little bit later now. I am heating up my other meal preps for my dinner. I'm having Thai steak and then in the air fryer, we've got a little bit of garlic roasted broccoli and then a sweet potato with some special topping on it. Not sure, but we're about to find out. Smells good. It's sesame aioli. So that's gonna be my dinner. I'm gonna give half the broccoli to Zaya because she does like roasted broccoli. But what are you having for dinner? Mini pizza, carrots, and juice box. <laughs> she made her own mini pizzas with that non bread stuff that I was showing y'all earlier. A side of baby carrots, you know, balance and some broccoli. I feel like. That's not doing too bad. And then I got my broccoli, my sweet potato, which I'm very interested to try. And I'm gonna put this straight in the air fryer, my steak. Taste test, I know what this broccoli tastes like. It's, you know, standard, but this sweet potato with this sauce on top, I'm curious. Honest opinions. It's a mild flavor. It's definitely like a sesame flavor. I mean, duh, that's what it is. It's good, it gives it kind of like an Asian flair. That would make sense to go with like the Thai steak. Kind of an Asian vibe going on. Yeah, Thai steak, but it was supposed to be paired up. They give the menu and kind of pair up the entree with the sides. So yeah, those two things are supposed to go together. So that makes sense. I like it. We'll see how the steak tastes. I'm still very new to this company, so I'm still just kind of like, trying everything and giving my feedback. They will customize anything, so I just kind of have to let them know what I like and what I don't like. But so far, so good. I think it's worth the investment. Man, I got distracted and forgot about my steak in the air fryer and I uh, burnt it a little bit. I think it might still be edible. It's just a little well done and I normally like it more like medium. Uh. <laughs> I swear I'm not this bad in the kitchen to where I can't even prepare pre-prepared food. It's fine, it's probably fine. All right, dinner is done. Zaya is having a chocolate covered strawberry for dessert. <laughs> Why are you licking it like that? And I wanna try my little snack mixes I got from HEB today, a little taste test. I'm gonna taste both of them. Both of them. Not that they're anything crazy because it's just cereal and stuff. So I feel like I know what it's gonna taste like. 
But I'm curious about this part. Oh, <laughs> they're like big old. <laughs> Wait, let me get one out. They're like big old egg things. I thought they were gonna be little tidbits. This is the yogurt flavored coated marshmallows. I shouldn't be eating this. My tummy don't like yogurt, but. Oh, it's literally, a what? It's a marshmallow. I eat dairy free yogurt, coconut yogurt. This is dairy. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is. Does it look good? It has strawberries, freeze dried strawberries. Those yogurt things are good though. And then it has a little Chex Mix cereal, Cheerios basically. It's not very snackable because all the pieces are so big. It's like you have to pick up one thing at a time and eat. You can't like eat a handful. Like, that's my feedback. Like these big old yogurt balls and these big old full size strawberries and stuff. It's like, I can't get a, a multi bite. I have to eat it piece by piece. I wish these were smaller and I wish they crunched up the strawberries, but it's good. It's a yogurt coated marshmallow. You like it? Bougie, you are so nosy. He just came right up in my lap like, hello, what are y'all eating? Okay, the s'mores one, graham cookies, pretzels, yogurt coated marshmallows, but they're like chocolatey. Or no, milk chocolate coated rice squares. Chocolate coated Chex Mix. I'm gonna try to do a bite. A little mini pretzel, a little mini graham cracker cookie thing, and the same big old egg things. <laughs> That's too much for one bite. It, the scale, like I said, they, they needed to think about the scale of these objects. I'm gonna try to do it all at once. Mmm, mm. mm. tastes like a s'more. It's good. You gotta get one of each thing in one bite. Well, maybe bite this in half first. That, that, and that. Okay, try it all together. <laughs> Can you even <laughs> chew it? It's too sweet. Too sweet is too big. It's too much, okay. <laughs> Tastes good though. I rate it, deducting points for everything being too big and bulky, I rate it like a six out of 10.